Officially live broadcasting only on OneDealAway.com. My name is Matt. This is Money Matters. And today, boy, do we have news. Hey, Nancy, are you listening? Are you listening? Hey, anybody, can you tell me, is Nancy listening? Is she there? So, of course, we're going to be talking about the Twitter war that has begun or is continuing is a better choice of word. Uh, as uh, President Trump is uh, tweeting, the deal is off, the deal is on, we don't know what to do. Hey, one moment we get information that there will be no negotiation, no signature, no stimulus, no nothing until after the election where President Trump fully, fully anticipates and plans that he will be the President of the United States for a second term. That's right, and then he'll make everything just Fine. And then a couple hours later, well, he changed his mind and said, you know what, Nancy, if you send me stuff so we can send stuff to, you know, people, if we can send money to people, then I will sign it. I will sign it. I will sign it. So they are like this old married couple that are like yelling across the house to each other. And we are all caught in the crossroad. Of course, what happened with the markets? Well, they dumped. And uh, so we're going to be taking a look at all of that stuff with the insanity of what is going on in the political sphere. Like I said to you, back in uh, August, um, no, actually, back in July, if we don't get this stuff uh, now, we're not getting this puppy uh, this year, right? And uh, maybe after the election, but don't count on it. So I have been sadly right yet one more time i wished i was wrong on this one uh but i figured that hey it's going to get political hot mess everybody's going to try to look good in front of everybody else and it's always going to be the other party's fault at the end of the day it's all of their fault for failing to do what they need to do in order to assist the people and at the end of the day it is people that suffer but hey you go out there and you vote for your favorite cheater. Let's do this. y'all and good morning good morning good morning welcome 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 super excited that you're here i do want to welcome everybody watching this live on one dealaway.com slash live and of course i do also don't want to forget all of the folks that are like you know it's too early for me or it's too far away from me or it's too late depending where you are in the world who is watching this on youtube or somewhere else wherever it might be posted Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, do me a huge favor, smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell button, you get notified of the show whenever it shows up live, which is every single day. And better yet, give it a shot. Come join us on onedealaway.com slash live, where you can sign in. It's free. Don't worry about it. But the sign in is just the only way that you can go in, come in, say hello, and we do a Q&A at the end of the show. So if you want to do that stuff, I absolutely welcome you because that is my favorite part to do. And, of course, always it's a AMA. Ask me anything. <laughs> so here we go. What's going on with the Trumpster? And, uh, yeah, so crazy Nancy Pelosi. This is a quote, y'all. This is not my opinion. This is a quote directly from the president. It's uh, sort of silly and scary, personally. Sorry, I just got to put this commentary here. But it's sort of scary that the president of the United States would say something like this. But then again, then again, this is who we selected. And you know what? Personal opinion, I don't care for Trump. I don't care for Biden. I actually don't care for any of them because at the end of the day, everybody is in for their own celebrity status and not necessarily for the people, regardless of what they tell you. And even if, even if they have started as a sort of, I'm here for the people, well... That may or may not be completely true. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on with crazy Nancy Pelosi and dump, I mean, Trumpster. <laughs> dumpster. <laughs> well, yesterday he was a dumpster because he tweeted this stuff and the stock dumped. I'll show you. All right. 
crazy Nancy Pelosi and the radical left Democrats were just playing games with the desperately needed worker stimulus payment. They just wanted to take care of the Democrats' failed high crime cities and states. They were never in it to help the workers and they never will be. And then she also stated, where is the thing? Where is the thing? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I had it pulled up, y'all. I had it pulled up. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is the thing? Oh, my gosh. I thought I had asked. There we go. This is the one. This is the one. So he said that afterwards. But first, at 2.48 p.m. yesterday, he said Nancy Pelosi is asking for $2.4 trillion to bail out poorly run, high crime, Democrat states, money that is in no way related to COVID-19. We made a very generous offers of $1.6 trillion, and as usual, she's not negotiating in good faith. I am rejecting there. And, uh, and then he continued, request uh, and looking uh, to the future of our country, I have instructed my representatives to stop negotiating until after election, when immediately after I win, we will pass a major stimulus bill that focuses on hardworking Americans and small businesses. I have asked Mitch McConnell not to delay, but to instead focus full-time on approving outstanding nominee to the United States Supreme Court, Amy Coney Barrett. Our economy is doing very well. The stock market is at record levels. Jobs and unemployment also coming back in record numbers. We are leading the world in economic recovery, and the best is yet to come. And uh, that was at uh, 2.48. Now, let's jump to the stocks. At 2.46, and then boom. <laughs> so uh, right after the tweet, it just went kaboom down. This is Dow Jones Industrial, which it went down 1.34%. Then you have S&P 500, right? Right over here, 246, 248, 250, and down 1.4%. And, of course, you have NASDAQ basically doing the exact same thing, uh, nosedive, straight nosedive. So this is one of those interesting things where I keep saying the market is manipulated. Sometimes it's manipulated by those that are in the market, so, meaning like the brokers and that kind of stuff, right? Sometimes it's manipulated by the owners of the companies, like the CEOs, CFOs, EIEIOs. Uh, with the uh, interesting uh, uh, accounting practices and financial uh, stimulation planning, whatever it is that they, that they are doing, right? And then sometimes it's manipulated by our own government, y'all, by our own government. So this is an interesting one for me uh, when I look at this whole thing because, you know, uh, I, I, just, I just look at it and it's just really, really funny that one person – can go out, tweet something crazy, and the markets go down. And then tell me they're not manipulated. Um, you know, is it possible that it's all set up? Yeah, sure, anything is possible. I have no clue. I have no clue. But take a look at this stuff, right? Take a look at this stuff. And now you might be thinking, well, you know, Nev, uh, maybe that's uh, maybe that's just, uh, you know, maybe that's just, that's just the stocks. Well, Gold and silver also went down. Gold is down now to $1,886.25. Thank you very much. And silver is down to $23.54 with the gold to silver ratio at 80.1. So uh, it's not just the stonks. As you can see, precious metals also took a dump. And not only that, not only that, we also noticed that it has happened with the cryptocurrencies as well. Take a look. So, Bitcoin down uh, in 24 hours, 1.3, back down to $10,583.88. And uh, ETH is down as well to 338.34. And as we scroll down, again, it's doing this stuff. Hold on. We're going to get this adjusted. We're going to get this adjusted. As we scroll down, you can see that it's like a sea of red. Sea of red. Red, 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 red. I mean, it's not ending right so it's not just the top markets and stuff everything is but the curious and interesting piece that i did want to share here with you is that i was uh, you know i've been wanting to obviously add to my position and i was looking at bitcoin and started to go up to like 10.6 10.7 10.8 and i'm like oh man 
So yesterday when I went in to check it and I saw that it was 10-5, I'm like, this is fabulous. So I did actually increase my position in full uh, transparency. And uh, if we look at the 24, we do have one project that is up in the green more than 1%, and that is EOS, and that is because there's news with EOS and Google that we are going to be looking at today. So stay tuned for that. We are definitely going to take a look at that. But you will see that everything else is like if it moved, it's like zero point something um, or it's negative. And of course, the biggest dump is um, Aave. Um, and I believe it's the Lend one because Aave just has a new coin that they have just launched. And we're going to take a look into that as well. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Uh, Wi-Fi or YFI is down 20%, 20.7% 20 in 24-hour period, down to $14,413.68. And a lot of it has to do with a new thing that was rolled out that turned out that there was a bug in a system that uh, folks could basically withdraw these crazy amounts of DAO um, that, uh, or, or sorry, not DAO, DAI, DAI, D-A-I, my apologies, um, DAI that uh, they didn't even actually like, you know, a, a, a pledge or, or a stake or any of that stuff. Um, and uh, so, so that is definitely losing some steam over there. And of course, I'm sure that something with the yield is also what is preventing the rise of this puppy. And uh, the good news is with the DeFi kind of dumping is the fact that, well, um, you know, we are uh, getting, um, we're getting that the Ethereum is actually now able to breathe a little bit and uh, t t transactions are moving way, way, way faster because all of the changes and stuff. So, but let's go back to the Trumpster before we get into some of the news because of the insanity and the uncertainty that we are all going to be experiencing right now. All right, so this is what was tweeted at 2.48 p.m. Then, then at 9.54 p.m., uh, so not, you know, a lot longer, but clearly either he took medication or a drink or some sort of something happened. He basically tweeted saying the House and Senate should immediately approve $25 billion for airline payroll support and $135 billion for paycheck protection program for small businesses. Both of these will be fully paid for with unused funds from the CARES Act. Have this money. I will sign now. Um, so then he was trying to basically come back and come back to the whole like, oh, no, 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 negotiations are over. I'm not doing anything until you elect me and then I'm going to do everything. Um, so it's an interesting bit for sure. And then and then and then and then at 10 o'clock last night, he tweeted, if I am sent a standalone bill for stimulus checks, $1,200, they will go out to our great people immediately. I am ready to sign right now. Are you listening, Nancy? Are you listening, Nancy? So I am curious, Nancy. Nancy, hey, are you listening? Are you listening? He changed his mind. He's sorry. He's very, very sorry. He just, he can't agree with everything else. But he will sign this. Will you please work on this stuff? Will you? Will you, Nancy? Will you? So let me know what you think about this whole insanity. Uh, put it in the comments, put it in the chat. Um, I'm very, very curious to find out what you are thinking. I am thinking this whole thing is nuts. That is my personal and humble opinion. That is my personal and humble opinion of what is going on. Now, of course, I did tell you that we're going to take a look at what's going on with some of the news information. Of course, we've heard that uh, and we've seen that the stock market took the plunge and uh, we're looking i was looking this morning at the futures the futures are back into the green because hey trumpster said i will sign i will sign just kidding just kidding i'm so sorry so sorry so sorry hey nancy are you listening nancy let's go and take a look at what's going on in google nancy nance nance google cloud and eos are looking at partnership that's right that's right. Welcome to the crypto, y'all. And then tell me that blockchain and crypto are not here to stay and grow. Ha! Huh. All right. Block.1 pointed out in a press release that Google Cloud will join the EOS community. 
Google Cloud is allegedly taking steps to be an EOS network block producer. Google Cloud will leverage EOS network good performance and the active open source community as it strives to be a block producer. The company will also leverage its best infrastructure to enable stability, reliability, security, and worldwide coverage, an excellent fit for a public blockchain networks, including EOS. So they're basically creating this partnership between the Google Pl uh, Cloud and Block One, which is right the creator of EOS, to have um, Google Cloud provide the blockchain um, uh, security kind of you know uh, performance in order to create stuff and of course here you can read way more about it and uh, it's available in just about every single big channel that you wanted to read on on what's happening with this big news now I also did tell you that Ave did put out a new coin and this is the one that is actually dumping big time so there is Ave, which is, you know, how they have a coin called Lend, L-E-N-D, excuse me. And they also have a new one that just came out that is Ave coin, which is A-A-V-E. Now, this is the one that is down almost 24%. And as you can see, this is basically what has transpired. We can go to the seven days all we want, uh, but, you know, you will see that it was kind of like released. It's super, super new. And it's a uh, it's a very nice sort of dump thing. And if you're interested in learning more, you can find their white paper. And it's located it's located on GitHub of all people. So if you go to GitHub and you look for Ave Protocol, um, you will get their white paper there, and you can read the whole thing if you are interested. This is something that was released as of January. 2020 now there's another coin that is actually performing pretty dang well in the short period of time and that is uni trade that's right it's yet another leverage on uniswap it's called uni trade the market cap is only 21 uh, 29 million sorry and the tw uh, 24 hour trading volume is six million dollars uh, but the coin is trading right now at a dollar and four cents and it is up almost 30 percent so if you take a look you can see that it's been going up rather nicely over the course of the 24 hours with the price being below dollar it kind of dumped uh, right here uh, around four o'clock uh, yesterday uh, to 71 cents or something like that and uh, now it's above a dollar and uh, you can see that this is so, so, so new. So new, so shiny, so new. Uh, so who knows how this will perform, uh, but it will definitely be interesting. Apparently this puppy has been happening for a little while and the high, the local high was at $1.05, right? Um, so, and that's a, that's a, you know, over the course of the last uh, seven days, and uh, it was up to like a dollar 30 20 40 something like that uh, so it has kind of come down since and uh, you can definitely take a look at unitrade uh, website so this is where we are right now and it's basically a DeFi trading platform built from uniswap so it tries to leverage uniswap um, that uh, that is slightly different but the same uh, if you are interested in taking a look at it, by all means, please do. Um, you know, it explains a bit of kind of what they do, how their co uh, token is used and traded, how it all works. Um, you know, and so they will have the OTC presale, which is now in circulation, which is 40%. Um, the liquidity development is 40%. The reserve and team is 10% and audits market partnership is 10%. Total supply is 50 million coins. And so they explain the whole thing as well as contract address. So if you want, you can click on this puppy. It will take you to the ether scan where you can go in and take a look at how it's all set up, where the price is, uh, what the total supply is. Um, you know, you can explore the contract, uh, you can see a whole lot about it, see the transactions of what's going on. So it's 
there's definitely transactions but it's not uh, you know it's not like super rapid but then again it is a brand new uh, product or or protocol or I don't even know what to call it anymore it's an app it's an app I guess um, and the website is unitrade.app and again if we click on the contract um, address it will actually take us right into the puppy um, and uh, we can explore uh, we can explore the contract right here if you want um, and it is actually contract sources code verify which is exact match but uh, there are solidity compiler but uh, compiler bugs so you can click here and it will actually tell you what there are some uh, challenges that potentially might exist within the code and then of course you can read the entire code over here if you are so inclined so there you go that's something that it is kind of interesting if you are interested in doing that stuff hey nancy did you have a chance to check out unit trade hmm? Hmm? probably not probably not all right we do have some uh, a bit more information and news coming to us when it comes to regulations as you know i have been paying a lot of attention to regulations and regulators and what's going on and we do have information from the ripple co-founder that is signaling potentially moving out of united states because he is stating that united states is not providing clear, clear guidance and is making it very very challenging to operate in united states um, on with the blockchain and with cryptocurrencies and is also alleging that there are folks or sorry countries that are definitely winning in the technology war that we're in we didn't know we're in but we definitely are um, and that there are better countries better jurisdictions where it might make sense for them to potentially move so ripple co-founder chris larson is considering moving ripple's base from united states to a jurisdiction where clear regulation on blockchain and digital currencies hinting at the uk switzerland singapore and japan and before he jumps to UK, you, uh, we do have news from UK about regulations that you absolutely must know. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Larson said that the United States is still lagging behind the rest of the world in policy and regulation. Quote, the message is blockchain and digital currencies are not welcome in the US. You want to be in this business, you probably should be going somewhere else. To be honest with you, we're even looking at relocating our headquarters to a much more friendly jurisdiction. Larson uh, was highly critical of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission as well. I don't think that the posture at the SEC today can possibly get worse for the crypto and blockchain industry. It's just crush it and push it away. And a lot of it that comes from the fact that they are, you know, looking at stuff and they're having a hard time because the challenge is regulation, as I have mentioned in one of the earlier episodes. I want to say it was earlier this week, maybe this weekend. Um, I don't recall. My apologies for that. But we did talk about it with the fact that there are no clear guidelines on many things. And sometimes it is uh, violating SEC and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it is security. Sometimes it's not. And they don't even understand it or know it. So they're just, you know. Um, sort of saying, no, 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 go and innovate and build it. But then when you do, then you find yourself in hot waters. Uh, but in order to not get into the hot waters, you know, you have to get regulations, but they can't give you regulations because you haven't built it. So it's sort of a chicken and the egg uh, problem. USA has fallen far behind in the ongoing co uh, tech cold war with China. And this is coming from Larson. Uh, China's central government has ferociously outpaced American lawmakers in providing clarity on legislation, delegating resources, building new infrastructure, and fostering innovation in blockchain and other emerging technologies. And uh, uh, so he also has stated, uh, quote, China has recognized that those technologies are key to who is going to control the next gen financial system. Swift and correspondent banking is not going to be the system we are going to be living with over uh, the next two decades. And I absolutely agree with that. Swift is highly, highly, highly outdated, extremely politicized and weaponized. And more and more countries are getting out of that system. Swift is used for interbank um, exchanges or sending of the money, right? 
when you do it internationally. And the challenge is that it's controlled by U.S. So if U.S. doesn't like you, doesn't like your politics, doesn't like what you have to say about, you know, Trumpster or Hey Nancy um, or anybody else, um, you know, then then, uh, um, you know, they basically say you can't use it and effectively shut you out of the world economy. That is highly problematic. More and more countries are saying we don't want to play that game anymore, and they're starting to create their own stuff, and a lot of it will fall down on the blockchain technology and decentralization, and I do agree with this thing that, you know, it's very, very challenging. The Ripple's CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, also tweeted in support of co-founders indicating that Ripple may relocate. Quote, strongest internet company built in the U.S. in part because of regulatory clarity. We have an operation with the blockchain plus digital. We have an opportunity with blockchain and digital assets. Responsible players like Ripple aren't looking to avoid rules. We just want to operate in jurisdiction where the rules are clear. And I absolutely agree. It's nearly impossible to stay on the legal side when you don't know what legal is, right? And so what is legal for one party is not necessarily legal for the other party. What is illegal for you might be legal for me. And it's very hard to understand of what is going on, what the rules are, what the regulations are, and that is part of the problem. That is the part of the reason why they're saying, you know what, we just might want to leave. We just might want to leave because this is becoming very, very challenging for us to stay on the legal side because we don't know what legal is anymore. And in order to stay legal, I mean, you have to hire a small army of attorneys and accountants and lobbyists to basically, you know, A, fill the pockets of the government, sad but true, um, and, uh, and of course, you know, pay all of those attorneys to attempt to argue and fight on your behalf uh, just so that you have a chance of surviving. Now, if you are a super, super large company like Google, Facebook, Amazon, where you have billions and trillions of dollars, that is relatively speaking easy for you to do. If you are a startup that is basically trying to be self-funded by you know yourself, the small group of family friends, you know, small group of investors, that's nearly impossible because vast majority of your money, instead of going towards the development, towards the tech, towards the marketing, towards pushing it out and doing what business should be doing, how has to go towards the regulations and, like I said, patting the pockets of the legislatures in order to approve your project. And that is very, very challenging stuff. So I don't know how you feel. That's my personal belief and rant on the whole thing. Now, I did also mention uh, that uh, UK, we do have uh, regulations coming from UK, and it has a lot to do with retail investors, a.k.a. you and I. Let's take a look. UK financial dog, FCA, bans crypto derivatives trading for retail investors. This is hot off the press right now. The United Kingdom's financial regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, has issued its final rules banning the sale of crypto derivatives and exchange-traded notes, ETNs, that reference certain types of crypto assets to retail consumers. They are basically saying that it's ill-suited for retail consumers due to the harm they pose. And uh, uh, this is basically uh, just another way for the government to say, well, you know, you, the little people, this is not for you. Let's give this to the big boys in institutional investing to make money off of this stuff. Now, do I believe that there is high risk with this stuff? Absolutely, 100%. But look, there's risk with everything. And so instead of banning it, why don't we educate people? Why don't we provide education? Why don't we provide sufficient information that says this is highly risky and here's the gains and losses you can potentially have from this stuff. So make your own decision. You are an adult. Make your own decision. It's your money. You can do as you want. Now, I also understand that the problem is that if the government allows it, right? So it's not just the government, it's the people as well. Because if the government allows it, they're like, well, you sanctioned it. You sanctioned it, and then my money went away. And now, and now, now I want my money back. Hey, Nancy, are you listening? I want my money back. Hey, 
I want my money back. And we've seen that here in the United States where we had basically investors to the Robin Hood buy, uh, you know, these crazy stocks uh, from the companies that are going bankrupt. Right. And of course, the stock dumps. And then they go to the Congress and please and say, oh, but that was everything I had. That was everything I had. Please, 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 please give me my money back. Well, folks, come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. You either want protection or you want freedom. You can't have both. And unfortunately, when you give up your freedom, you shall have no security nor freedom. This, this was shared by our founding father, Benjamin Franklin. It is one of his quotes, and I absolutely agree with it. We are trading more and more of our freedoms for an alleged security and protection, and we now have none, and they are rapidly depleting. Now, this dramatic twist came barely three months after the Financial Conduct Authority granted Kraken subsidiary Kraken Futures the license to conduct its derivative business in the country, in the, in the UK. It also comes after the stated, after the United States Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, accused BitMEX of operating an illegal derivatives business and that claim has been sent as a caution to regulators in other regions, including the FCA. And they noted in its remarks, quote, significant price volatility combined with inherent difficulties of valuing crypto assets reliably places retail consumers at a risk of suffering losses from trading crypto derivatives. We have evidence of this happening on a significant scale. The ban provides an appropriate level of protection. Now, again, I do agree that it is potentially hard to value the assets, but crypto assets are not the only ones that are hard to value reliably. I would argue the stocks are also equally as hard to value because all of the stimulus, all of the manipulation, all of the silly stuff that is happening behind that we've covered at the beginning of the show. I mean, you can't tell me that one person who potentially, potentially uh, failed to take medication um, is going out there and saying no deal and then saying, no, 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 just kidding, just kidding. Hey, Nancy, are you listening? I'm ready to make a deal now. Um, you know, is able to send the market on the insane, uh, crazy loop that the big banks that we've covered are able to go and manipulate market left, right, and center and sideways, as I always say, um, that are, you know, able to go out and do business with all of the, um, you know, uh, people that are money laundering that are known that they shouldn't be doing stuff and, you know, they just get sm slight slap on the wrist. Um, so with all of that stuff, I would argue that just about every financial asset that is paper asset, it's nearly impossible to value reliably. But those are still allowed for folks to go in and participate in. Those are still allowed, people are still allowed to get into the Robin Hood and basically place all these crazy derivatives and everything else without an issue, without a problem whatsoever. They're allowed to go into Robin Hood and quote unquote buy cryptocurrencies where it's not a cryptocurrency. It's a derivative of a cryptocurrency. When you buy in Robin Hood, you don't actually own that crypto. You just own a paper version that is basically following the price of that stuff. So again, let me know what you think. This is how I feel about the whole thing. So do hit the like button, do subscribe, hit the bell button so that I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to go into the Q&A with everybody watching this live right now. For everybody else watching this at home or anywhere else, I will see you tomorrow. Until then, stay forever money blessed and do remember, you are only one deal away.